नमस्कार वेलकम टू अवर चैनल बाय बाय गुलाब सर फॉर विजडम कोचिंग सेंटर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट न्यू चैप्टर ब्रीथिंग एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेस इन ह्यूमन बीइंग वी ऑलरेडी लर्न इन सेवन नाइन्थ क्लास इट इज एज ए रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम व्हिच कंपोज ऑफ नॉस्ट्रिल नेसोफेरिंग्स ग्लॉटिस ट्रैकिया ब्रोंखाय ब्रोंक्यूल्स टर्मिनल ब्रैंक्यूल्स एंडिंग इन टू पाउच लाइक स्ट्रक्चर कॉल अल्यूवलाई वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सिस्टम दैट हेल्प अस टू ब्रीथ दैट मींस इनहेल द ऑक्सीजन एंड एक्सहेल द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड सो टुडे लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड दैट रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम इट्स स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शंस ऑफ द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनिज्म एज डिफरेंट मैकेनिज्म of breathing and exchange of the gases as lower organism like amoeba sponges cylindrate platyhelminthes ascelminthes even annelids till annelids they have exchange of gases by diffusion through their exposed open area to the atmosphere and surrounding where they exchange that is inhalation of oxygen and exhalation of carbon dioxide in earth form it is cutaneous respiration you know that earth form body it is moist they used to live in mud and with that moist mucus condition that they have excess of gases in higher that is arthropoda where they have tracheary system to have the excess of gases that tracheary system with spiracle eight pair of spiracles in abdomen and two spiracles two pairs of spiracles in thoracic cavity act as a nose with peritrim that is contract and relaxing muscles present all around the spiracle for inhalation and exhalation so tracheary system in arthropods cutaneous respiration in arthropod mollusk they do have again this exchange of gases by their body surface as well as they have simple respiratory mechanism as in the advance that fishes they have gills amphibians they have skin as well as gills in tadpole stage and skin in water buccal pharyngeal respiration as well as pulmonary respiration reptile birds and mammals they are evolved with breathing mechanism as pulmonary respiratory system so as in the evolutionary order we are at the highest level we are evolved with pulmonary respiratory system that is pulmonary mechanism of exchange of gases so let us understand that respiratory mechanism in human being so as you are aware about this diagram given in books i am going to draw and explain you how to draw that is also important part therefore we as a teacher professor lecturer we must have that caliber to explain with diagram and yes i am going to draw and explain you how to draw that is also important skill to have it so here you see the diagram is shown you can take the assistance of this diagram from net but as a part of teaching and learning we should know respiratory system see here you can see these are the external nares this area is called nostril this is called nasopharynx this is oropharynx and here this is glottis from here 
that air is entered into trachea. This trachea is covered by C-CEP incomplete ring and trachea extend in thoracic cavity up to fifth vertebrae. Here you see these external nares, these are the area called nostrils where this is a nasal septum has no concern with breathing but you must know as a part of respiratory system for the sense of perception of olfaction therefore olfactory receptor is present in this nasal part called nasal septum for the sense of olfaction nostrils are continued to open into internal layers internal nails. Here this is nasopharynx. Nasopharynx. Remember this word nasopharynx. This is oropharynx. So air is passes from internal nail to nostril, nostril to internal nail to nasopharynx to oropharynx. Now it is directed towards glottis. This glottis has cover of epiglottis. So this blue color what I have drawn is a cartilaginous cover to protect the entry of food at the time of when we swallow the food. This epiglottis get closed. Uh, clo epiglottis close the glottis that is opening to the trachea to prevent the entry of the food as well as this uvula. This structure is called uvula. So here, see, I am going to draw here uvula. This uvula also close this internal layer entry of the food into nostril area. So these are the two structure: epiglottis and uvula. Uvula is muscular. Epiglottis is cartilaginous. Both these structures protect entry of the food into <coughs> trachea and internal nostril area to avoid the coughing. You would have been experienced very often that when you speak, by the time when you eat, you may have coughing. That too painful coughing. And therefore, our great <coughs> parents and elders used to say that do not talk while eating. That is very correct to prevent this pain by coughing if food is entered into the trachea. And it is painful and harmful also. So we should take precaution that we should not speak. Because to speak we require wind or air that come from lungs through glottis. And therefore glottis open to speak. At the time there is a food. So while eating, if there is a food and we try to speak, that food particles may enter into trachea and very difficult to get rid of them and therefore for the some time we have to stop the eating also so as a precaution that please remember now this area is called trachea this trachea is a long pipe like structure it has cartilaginous covering these what i am drawing these are the c shape covering all around this trachea Importance of this seat safe covering around this trachea is to prevent from its collapsing and this ring, cartilaginous rings are continue up to primary branchial, secondary branchial, tertiary branchial and terminal branchial. So let's see, I'm drawing here. Very important to note that how long this trachea, this trachea is extend up to fifth thoracic vertebrae, fifth thoracic vertebrae. This is the point of neat. So please remember this is as a point for neat exam. How long that trachea extends deep into the thoracic cavity and then it get bifurcated to form the bronchi. So these structures are called bronchi or bronchus. Individual is bronchus to therefore bronchi so b r o n c h u s is a bronchus is a singular structure but either side is a bronchiole now to understand here this is a pleural cavity in which
his lungs are located so on either side this bronchi form primary bronchial then these are the secondary bronchial yes these are the secondary bronchial then these are tertiary bronchial and this what terminal bronchial so see these are primary bronchial primary has these branches called secondary bronchial then the secondary has this branch as a tertiary bronchial and now these branches branches to the tertiary is called terminal bronchial and this up to terminal bronchial up to terminal bronchial that cartilaginous rings are continued cartilaginous rings are continue if i have to show it by color so this is very easy to make you understand by using this another color to show these are the suppose cartilaginous ring that they are present all around up to terminal bronchioles let you see i am trying to draw it to make you understand so see up to terminal bronchiole and this terminal bronchiole then open into a flat pouch like structure so this flat pouch like structure that is overlap and they cover maximum area in this pleural cavity so that they get extended so they are the end or beginning of this terminal bronchiole called respiratory bronchiole get end or get expanded into pouch like structure these pouch like structure they have epithelium they have epithelium let you understand i am drawing trying to draw epithelium so here this is a squamous epithelium form this structure of the alveoli very thin squamous epithelium is the flat tile shape cells that form so this, there is very easy to extend the gases and therefore it form by the thinnest tissue if there is tissue call squamous epithelium tissue here also to draw here also primary bronchiole secondary bronchiole tertiary bronchiole and these are terminal bronchiole so there is a dense network of this bronchiole provided with cartilaginous ring up to terminal bronchiole so remember they have cartilaginous ring they have primary secondary tertiary and terminal they have cartilaginous ring question can i ask that ring c shape ring like cartilaginous ring extend up to a primary bronchiole b secondary bronchiole c tertiary or all of these ya yeah, primary and secondary secondary and tertiary up to tertiary up to terminal and then this terminal get expanded into alveoli where there is no cartilaginous ring now this structure what i have drawn this structure is called pleural cavity this is called pleural cavity pleural cavity has two membranes it is double membrane so outer pleura and inner pleura outer pleura this is a membrane and this is inner pleura and together this is pleural cavity filled with fluid extracellular pleural cavity filled with extracellular fluid now this is what covered by ribs from down side it is covered by diaphragm it is covered by diaphragm so here this is a dome shaped structure called diaphragm see i am drawing it double so as to be visible in video because sometime this color do not visible 
and there pole it is from down side front side here there is a sternum if i have to say show it is as a 3d so we can use another color that here there is a sternum so i do draw it is just as to visible to you so to visible to you see this is a sternum from and ribs so to draw ribs again i will use white color so that it will be visible to you so these are the ribs these are the ribs so these ribs are hold together by external intercostal muscles and internally by internal intercostal muscles and back side these ribs are continue to be towards the dorsal side they are continue to form the rib cage so dorsal side and up to ventral side sternum and ribs from the rib cage and towards posterior end there is a diaphragm to hold this lungs in a pleural cavity to how the process of inhalation and exhalation so this is the complete structure what i have been drawn so to label this are the alveolus alveolus is a singular form pleural form alveoli this alveoli pouch like structure internally line with squamous epithelium for the exchange of gases supported with this capillary network capillaries are red color suppose this is artery arteriole and these are the capillaries they expose there to how the exchange of the gases they are suppose in vicinity to alveoli oxygen from alveoli diffuse in capillary and carbon dioxide diffuse out so that we will learn in next part of the video how exchange of gases occur at the site of lungs alveoli when pulmonary artery brings deoxygenated blood to release the carbon dioxide and get oxygen diffuse in capillary to form the venules vein and later that vein late form large vein called pulmonary vein brings pure blood to the heart so here we learn that entire structure of respiratory system of human being the area of exposure for the exchange of gases in alveola is almost 100 meter square 100 meter square such a large area to how the fast exchange of gases is because of this pouch like structure alveola is a very large structure which expose and therefore we have very fast exchange of gases and therefore we are efficient to have immediate inhalation exhalation as well as exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass oxygen through blood to each cells of the body now let us understand which question can be asked in neat here <coughs> that area of question in neat is uvula and glottis one of the following sets of organ or parts of respiratory tract that prevent entry of the food into nasal tract now what is that nasal or respiratory tract here internal layers and nostril and here trachea that is called respiratory tract so which part uvula that prevent entry of the food into nostril and glottis prevent the entry of the food into trachea now next second question so this was the question can be asked in neat this also is area that question can be asked in neat that we have highlighted here <coughs> second topic that how long that trachea is extracted extended into our thoracic cavity so up to four vertebrae fifth vertebrae third vertebrae so here the answer is fifth thoracic vertebrae where later it branch into bronchi so question can be asked up to number of vertebrae is continue and extend and it is bifurcated into bronchi at the end of the fifth thoracic vertebrae now this cartilaginous ring c shaped cartilaginous ring how long they are extended cartilaginous rings are around the trachea bronchi bronchial are extend up to secondary bronchial up to tertiary bronchial up to terminal bronchial so naturally they are up to terminal bronchial now this lungs alveoli they are made up of squamous alveolar epithelial tissue so question can be asked lungs alveoli and endothelium of capillary is made up of 
columnar epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, cuboidal ciliated epithelium, or squamous epithelium. So these alveoli are made up of squamous epithelium. So squamous epithelium. So this is again a question to be asked in NEET. Then what the tissue is extend into the internal lining of trachea and bronchi is ciliated cuboidal epithelium. So all these they have ciliated cuboidal epithelium. What they have? Ciliated made up of ciliated cuboidal epithelium. So again that internal lining of trachea is made up of ciliated, ciliated cuboidal epithelium to how the movement of cuff right from which produces into the lungs alveolar to outside to <coughs> spit it out as it is a waste material. Expansion, that expansion and contraction is possible because of this thoracic coity covered by these <coughs> ribs and diaphragm. Now in second part we are going to learn how these ribs and diaphragm contract and relax and thereby increase and decrease the volume of the pleural cavity so as to have the exchange of gases. So here I have highlighted that question which to be supposed to be asked in NEET and pointed out also that to be remembered as the question can be asked in NEET examination. So you to note down this as this point can be as a point of NEET examination and in board explain the functional anatomy of respiratory system and that you can understand. I hope you did understand internal structure of respiratory system. Even if you are in doubt, you can ask in comment section. I appeal you to like our channel as well as subscribe it and press bell icon so as to get notified as and when we upload new videos will be seen by you. Thank you.